Oh no. Hey everybody. Uh, I'm Peter Walsh from SeaTuck Environmental Association. I'm the education director here. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about ospreys. And you may have seen some of these birds. Um, they're one of our favorites. This is a bird that first shows up, we always say, right around St. Patrick's Day. The males come back. Uh, they come back to their nest, they start cleaning them up to get ready. Uh, anywhere from about a week or two later, the females come and they find their males and they set up on their nest. So what we're going to do today is just talk a little bit about ospreys and, and what they are and how they go. So maybe you've seen these behind me, see up here at the top of this dead tree. We just started building this one this year, so this is a new one. One of the problems we have on Long Island is that when we have nice dead trees like this, we cut them down because we see them as a danger. So ospreys have a hard time. What a lot of places do is they put up poles, they put up better nesting material or habitat for the osprey so that they do not build their nests on the top of poles uh, or, or transformers, which they'll see in the nesting habitat. So the, the bit of a bummer part is the osprey's been sitting up there until about three minutes ago when he flew off to go. So I'm going to take this over. Thanks, buddy. So I'm going to get a little bit closer. So, oh, there we go. So you can hear it. So that high pitch shrieking call of the osprey. So let's see if they get to do it again. So unlike Enrico, I don't have that nice digiscope with me, but that osprey is sitting right up on top of the nest. Um, so most likely right now, it's probably the female sitting up there. I don't know if you heard her calling. So maybe she's calling back for hubby. We're a bit of a threat. Oh, oh look. And there she goes. Dropped out of the nest. So we'll see if she comes back. Um, so we are located right now. I'm not going to say exactly where we are, but we're on the south shore of Long Island. So these osprey nests, you'll often see them close to water. So osprey are a large, distinctive fish hawk. So if we get to see them, they have brown backs, uh, white bellies, some banding on them and they feed almost exclusively on fish. I say almost exclusively because there are some reports of them eating other things besides fish, you know, and if you're hungry and the opportunity presents itself. But they are mostly sustaining themselves on fish and they will travel miles to get to a good hunting ground. But if they can build their nest obviously closer to the water, they're much more successful. We can see that osprey circling. There's actually two of them circling there now. So hopefully we'll get to hear the, or see the two of them. So one of the cool things about osprey is that this is a bird that's really recovered. Um, if we go back into uh, the late 60s, this, three of them over there now. This was a bird that uh, almost 90% of their population had been erased. And then because of the ban of the use of DDT as a pesticide, the osprey will start started to recover at about 2% a year. And right now they're estimated to be about 500,000 osprey found just about everywhere. Here they come on earth where they have access to water. So there's actually four of them in my view right now. So I don't know if you'll be able to see them. Hopefully they'll come in and, and land for us. Um, so th these birds have really recovered well. And we see them just about everywhere we go on Long Island, because everywhere we go, we're close to water. Look at this guy's gonna cooperate for us. You can hear that call now. Just give you a minute to just check it out. So these, these birds, they fly, you often see them hovering above the water. And as they're hovering above the water, they're looking down for the fish that they want to eat. And ties into some of the other work that we do, but 
they'll often be eating. They have an ability to dive very deep so they can get about three feet into the water, but they'll hover. Once they see their fish, they'll dive in feet first, break the surface of the water, catch the fish, and then turn the fish to make it more aerodynamic as they fly it back onto their perch or back to their nest to eat it. Um, which is always, if you ever get a chance to see them flying with fish, it's always pretty interesting to see. There he goes calling again. Um, as they're going, so as they start to nest now, so they're sitting on their nest, and of course in the sun glare I can't see my phone. Um, but inside that nest they'll come back, use it year after year. Ooh, red belly woodpecker. So normally they'll lay anywhere between one and four eggs. They'll only do one brood or one clutch of eggs a year. Um, the eggs are uh, incubated of 36 to 42 days and then the young will stay on the nest oh, for about a month and a half or so almost two full months uh, and then you'll see them the parents will often take food fly above and that call that you were hearing they'll just call to try to get the the babies up out of the nest and flying and then sadly usually by mid-august or so they're all heading out and heading back down south, often heading back down into Central and, and Upper South America for the winter before they return back to us. Um, so this is a, you know, oh, so lucky just, just clutching away. So anybody have any questions about the osprey? You can type them in, I'll try to answer them. When will they lay their first eggs? So they're, they've laid their eggs now. So they're starting to sit on eggs. Uh, and so you figure by that mid-June time, we should have some early to mid-June. And they'll start fledging them out and be ready to go by August. So a lot of people wonder, you know, we get these big windstorms and how do those nests do? And they're great nest builders. So these nests hold up really well through all, all of the storms that come through, the high winds. Uh, once there's eggs there or, or even the young, it's really the females who are gonna stay and sit on top of them. She'll hunker down over them, protect them with her wings. Um, and remember, they're moving into summertime, so they're not just protecting the young from the wind and, and the rain, but they're also protecting them from the heat of the sun and the other elements that would hurt and damage the babies. And that leaves mostly dad out hunting for their food. Lots of other birds singing. All right, so as you drive around Long Island, not that we're going anywhere, but if you do, so cooperative. Start to notice these ospreys. So you can notice them from other hawks really based on their size. Um, this is a big bird. We're talking, you know, a four and a half to five and a half foot wingspan. And unlike hawks, they have really an M shaped wing. So when you see them flying from underneath, You'll see their wings have almost looked like forward pointing elbows, shaped kind of like an M, or if you're looking at it from the other way, a W. Uh, so you can really uh, identify these pretty easily as they're circling above. Also, they have little wing, a uh, little feather, like finger looking fingerettes at the tips of their wings that also help to identify them. and that distinctive call. And you can really see that white belly. They have that black eye or brown eye stripe, the brown wings, just a beautifully distinctive bird. And now as our bald eagle population is starting to build on Long Island. Ooh, some stress calls. Cause here's Papa right above us.
Maybe he's chasing that guy away. If you get really lucky, you'll often see a bald eagle chasing an osprey to steal its fish that the osprey just caught. I think we're going to start to leave these guys alone. So if nobody has any other questions, I'm going to let them go. But you can really see those fingertips. So I don't think he's mad at us. I think they're mad at each other. All right. So my name is Peter Walsh. I'm the education director for Sea Tuck Environmental Association. We try to do some kind of live video of the work that we do every day. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do a story time geared more for younger students or children. Uh, but on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're out in the field kind of highlighting the natural history of Long Island. Uh, so we hope we see more of you guys. And if you don't know, this Saturday we're doing a virtual eco carnival. You can get more information on our website at www.ctuck.org. And uh, we'll be doing a lot of live videos, a lot of stuff like this. So hopefully you guys can tune in and see that. And, you know, as we go through this, we can all kind of reconnect with our natural world. Be well, everybody. It's on the other side of the screen. And uh, so hopefully we'll uh, be seeing some of you tuning in for our, our ego call. It goes till 4 o'clock. We'll have all kinds of live activities from the field highlighting our work. We're also going to have Jungle Bob doing a live animal show. We're going to have Matt the Music Man doing a live interactive performance for everybody. So hopefully we'll see you all week. Hopefully we'll see you on Saturday. Uh, I know it's a tough time, so if you can, get out and, and breathe a little fresh air. Bye, everybody. Dad.